Hi, I'm Kimberly Rojas. I'm the Oakland branch president of the National Postal Mail Handlers Union. And why are you here today? I'm here today um, to to stand with all workers and to um, to help uh, with the uh, December 12th um, blockade and the Wall Street on the waterfront. And what are the conditions for postal workers today in the United States? They're actually horrible right now. I mean, we're under attack on every front. Um, between them, the post office trying to close um, several 250,000 plants um, nationwide, um, and also Congress is under attacking us with um, anti-union bills such as collective bargaining. There's 2039 that has actually waiting for a vote on Congress and if it goes down party lines it will pass which absolutely takes away our right as collective bar our collective bargaining rights. So this is a threat to the survival of your union and your membership? Absolutely. It's a threat to the Postal Service in general. The overall goal is to privatize. I mean they're slowly inching their way there every year. Well what does this mean for privatization for working people in this country and postal workers? Well, I mean, first of all, that would take the, I mean, there's a misconception that somehow, um, one, that we're in bankruptcy. The fed, If we're in bankruptcy, we're federal employees, the federal government then is in bankruptcy. So that's number one. And what they're actually wanting to privatize us is because there would be profit. The way we're not allowed as a postal service, as the government, to make a profit. So all of our money goes back into the labor costs. Eighty percent of it goes back into the people that actually do the work work. Unlike private corporation, if they had it, they would probably be paying 30 percent and the rest of it would go into their stockholders' pockets. So would privatization, do you think FedEx and the private companies would like to see the shutdown of the post office? Yes, I actually do, except what's funny is that half of them use us as uh, to deliver door-to-door -door for them, too, because, you know, it's a profit-saving means. They pay us a certain amount of money, and, and we deliver to door-to-door -to -door for a few of them. So, But, of course, you know, any time that you can um, fill your pockets with, the, with, with actually, it's, you know, Congress passed the Postal Service, and, and this is our right. It's, you know, back when it first started was the way of communication. I mean, we understand understand that things have definitely changed, but a lot of working class people, especially in rural areas, really depend on the postal service. Not everybody anymore can afford to have the internet. So, and, and shortly, if the economy doesn't change, that will become more and more. Now, the unions in this country are waiting for the politicians, Obama. Where does Obama stand on the privatization and the attack on postal employees? Well. He has, he actually has come out and really supporting of keeping our uh, postal service afloat, except that he hasn't been able to get the rest of his, uh, the Senate and the Congress to necessarily stand behind them. But they are talking about taking it down to five days, and every time you cut a service um, down to five days, it would cost, you're talking about that one move would cost many jobs, like, you know, maybe 100,000 nationwide just by them making that one move to take it down to five-day delivery. Well, there was a, a strike of the postal workers in 1970, even though it was illegal. Uh, why haven't the union said we're going to begin to use our power as workers in this country? Well, from what I know about that strike, and I don't know a lot about it, but that wildcat strike wasn't really from our national leaders that started that. It was from the rank and file that demanded it and started taking action. And, you know, I'm not sure when, but I could possibly see that in the future, what that might end up happening. Um, especially if some of these bills actually come out of Congress, you may see the rank and file stand up and take actions autonomously on their own. Now, England, uh, last week, there was a two million uh, st uh, member strike of all the public workers in England. Uh, and it seems like they have unified action of the public workers in England. They actually had a ballot vote of all public workers in England. Uh, what does that mean to the American working people and public workers in particular? I'm not really sure, but I wish that was happening right here in this great country of the United States of America because that's what we need. We need to all realize that what happens to one sector happens to all of us, and we need to stand together in unity. Now, some people are saying that this Occupy movement really is not uh, supported by unions. Uh, what's been your experience as a trade unionist leader of your local in the Occupy movement? Well. I 
I can just say that I got involved in it and I'm a union member and I know many other people are involved in it and they're union members and I happened to find my I didn't come to occupied Oakland because of a union I came because of what's in my heart I understand definitely that I am definitely the 99 percent and um, I just think it's it's common sense for workers to be standing with the occupied Oakland and and if you happen to be union well that's even better do you think the unions should be more actively engaged as organized bodies in supporting the Occupy movement? Oh, absolutely. I think that we should be out at every GA, and I think we should be out at every... And what is the GA? The General Assemblies, where it's the first time I got to participate in democracy. <laughs> what is that like? It's exciting and it's thrilling. I mean, I can't explain it. I've never, I've been around for a long time. My mother was involved in the Farm Workers Union, so I've been raised up in different movements, the anti-war movement, but I've never felt more alive and hopeful for our, for working class people in general. You think this is why there are a lot of people afraid of the Occupy movement? Absolutely. I say it's the new revol um, revolution that's happening right now, and you know, and it is being televised. <laughs> and this call for action on December the 12th uh, at all the ports in the West Coast and, and call for workers to join these things. What do you think effect it will have? Oh my God, if we close down all the ports on the West Coast, where it's unlimited the effect it'll have. One, I hope it energizes people to realize that that we are the power. That the power really lies within us. We're 99 and they're one. Why is it so disparity? I mean, if, if we can do that and then we f hit them in their pocketbooks, well, we're, that's a win-win for everybody. So you're optimistic? Yes, more than ever. I hope. <laughs> what, what do you think about the role of these mayors uh, using police and militarized force to attack? And they say they don't have any money, but apparently they have millions of dollars for police guarding parks. <laughs> Well, I have like a lot of personal opinions about that, but I um, think they get co-opted, you know, with the elite. I mean, they're the elites that are financing their public uh, runs for office, which is now outrageously expensive. You don't see an average. You can. I couldn't run for office because I would never be able to get the money, you know, not unless I wanted to sell out those who I say I'm going to be representing. So I think that's part of it. And I also think that, you know, because of the Homeland Security Act, they have to use all this little weaponry that has been given to them on somebody and I guess they decided it would be on the people that they're supposed to be representing. Do you think it's going to stop the Occupy movement? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, somebody uh, somebody said, aren't you afraid? I also have a daughter that runs the streets every day with Occupied. And I said, no, I'm not afraid. I mean, it's a time like if, if people in Egypt can stand for bullets, you know, my daughter can stand for tear gas and, you know, put her life on the line for a better future for herself. You think that's what the 1% are afraid of? Absolutely. Absolutely. And they should be because it's, I think it's going to be a tide that's going to overturn the 1% definitely.